Hey AI, can you maybe help me? Sure, what do you mean? Can you write a to-do up in Next? Sure thing, what? Lately, we've been flooded with generative AI all over the place, be it uh, Midjourney or Dali with the generated images, GPT-3 with generated text. I have decided to use it in order to generate an app. And let's see if generative AI can actually replace software developers. How did it go? Well, let's find out. If you're not using a generative AI as part of your daily workflow, you definitely missing out. Does the whole philosophical discussion, is it really something I did if I use the generative AI to create it or not? The way I see it, essentially, it's just another tool similar to a spell checker or autocomplete in the ID. Let's put all of that aside. Um, lately, we see more and more of ChatGPT, which is basically a conversation optimized version of GPT-3. And one of the most amazing things that ChatGPT can do is generate code. And I, as a software developer, was very curious to see if that's a tool we can use to generate applications. And so, with ChatGPT being the latest craze, I have decided to use it in order to generate an app. And let's see if generative AI can actually replace software developers. Okay, let's just ask it something simple. And let's see if it can actually answer. So, looks very, very promising for starters, right? even gives us the instruction of how to create the next uh, uh, JS app, how to create a store inside the next app. That looks like exactly what you should be doing for this. So we have the basic instructions. Let's try to follow them. Okay, lucky I actually know what I want to choose here. But for the sake of the experiment, let's ask ChatGPT to give us instructions of what to answer um, in those questions. Amazing, without Googling or basically doing anything, we got precise instructions of what to answer in the create next app. This time it doesn't actually give me the answers, but it gives me detailed explanation of what each question actually means. The most amazing part here is that if you look here, it still has the context that we are working on to do app. But we got a bunch of other instructions in the first answer, so let's follow them, right? Create a new next project. We've done that. In our project directory, create a new to-do JS file in the store directory. In the to-do, define a to-do array as a state variable. In the pages directory, create an index view file that will serve as the main view for your to-do. Okay, we created a to do JS. And we already have the index.view in the pages. Well, we didn't come here to ask the AI for help for it just to give us all the, the work, right? So let's ask it and see if it can actually uh, give us the code in each one of those files. And look at that, that is just pure science fiction. I mean, it actually writes the code for us. We got all the functions and all the code we need for the store. Let's copy the code. And now we paste it into the file we created. Got the full file here. And let's ask ChatGPT to create us the uh, index.view file. And we absolutely get a file that seems to make sense. Amazing. Everything looks correct. I do understand that it's basically like a machine learning algorithm that scanned the internet. But how close it is to reality is amazing and absolutely mind-blowing. So let's copy that again and paste it into the uh, index file. And let's ask ChatGPT how do we run it. And again, it gives us a lot of instructions on npm install and npm run dev. So let's kind of do just that thing. Right? So let's do npm install and npm run dev. And we have a basic app here. That is weird. Why when I click on that, nothing happens. Let's see if we got any errors. And we absolutely do. We get error here of a function that doesn't exist. That is cool. That actually works. But not the complete. So it seems this piece of code is the one in question. So a bit of stack overflow. Here we find the answer, right? So we shouldn't use the model, but we should use value. And we see clearly here that uh, ChatGPT told us to use the model. Let's do value instead. And we have that part of the app fully working. All right, so far everything is easy, but let's see if ChatGPT can even add uh, database storage for that. Let's use Superbase for that. Sign up for a Superbase account. Okay, no problem. Install Superbase.js. Configure the client to the IP, of course. 
seems that it's actually giving us all the database code for that, which is again, mind blowing if it actually works. And look at that, it's stopped in the middle. Let's do as we were told by T3, copy that and install it. We'll have to figure out that function. Let's see if ChatGPT will actually give it to us. The crazy thing is when we ask it to show that function specifically, it actually showed that to us. So we can copy it from here and paste it to here. And so we have add, remove, and we need to give it the Superbase URL and API key. But how do I define them? Let's go back to ChatGPT and ask it. And amazingly enough, again, it actually gave us the exact piece of code. By the way, if you don't know, Superbase is a very um, awesome open source backend as a service uh, platform. Basically, it's designed to replace like Firebase or similar backend as a service uh, platforms we used before. But every component in Superbase is actually an open source uh, component, such as PostgreSQL, uh, go to for indication, and so on. And you can either use the cloud version, which is very, very affordable, or host it yourself and uh, use a hosted version. And it's actually very easy to create a new app and, and so on. I actually already have one here. So let me just get the keys. Here's the URL and here's the API key. And let's ask ChatGPT, how do we create a database? And again, amazingly enough, ChatGPT just gives us step-by-step -step instructions how exactly to do that. The schema that we actually need to run. So app and the URL here is not defined. So essentially, ChatGPT is sure that that's enough and that should work, but I am pretty sure that we are missing a crucial component for that to work. So essentially, now our piece of code is supposed to be working, but we're actually never calling that function load to do's. So let's ask ChatGPT, where do we call it? And yeah, a perfect answer once again. Copy this and paste it in our function exactly how uh, ChatGPT gave it to us. At this point, I think I spent about an hour trying to fix all the issues that the code from ChatGPT actually generated. It worked, it all works. It was a good starting point. Let me show you that. So we have here, you know, we can check it out. Remove uh, the results. If I refresh, I get it. I can add one. It even has been stored in the database with all the results. All right, let's build a landing page. That should be easy for a text generation engine, right? Okay, we'll ask it to generate a landing page, which should generate a view component. And we'll say, use Tilewind CSS for the styling. So it added the styling to the existing list. Copy that piece and see how that looks in the page, even though that's not what I asked it to do. This is what we got. Look at that, this is just beautiful. We have the button here. How those things, even with a strike to when you select something. Essentially generated all the styling for us. It's not perfect, but it's an amazing starting point. Let's try to, to ask it to change the name of the page first. Uh, hopefully that the name worked. Yeah, and now let's ask it to create a new page about the project. Oh wow, that is just science fiction. We'll rename the index page into to do and then copy that code. And what we got here? My to do app built with Nux.js and Superbase. So it even knows exactly what we build the app with and keeps context the whole time. Then we click view to do's and we get the list of to do. And just for good measure, let's ask ChatGPT how to deploy it. And we even got exact instructions on how to deploy it. So. What it seems first glance is that AI, I mean, as expected, it just indexes the text. It doesn't actually understand the code. It doesn't verify that the code works. So essentially it's just a kind of the next generation of the documentation or maybe like the next generation of Stack Overflow in a way. So it replaces Google more than it replaces actually the developer. Two more papers down the line, that technology will do amazing things. And already now uh, it could keep track of the context. It could understand the framework I was uh, giving it to write in. It could write a lot of the uh, files around it, the database schema, the uh, kind of backend infrastructure, landing page, including text and explanation. All of that 
with one sentence of, of text send. Now, can it actually fully generate an app? Well, not yet, but it can give you snippets of code that are very efficient and easy to integrate into your app. Going forward, I'm sure such models could be trained to understand the code and be a lot more efficient, but we are still not there yet. One thing that comes out of it uh, working just with text is that very frequently hallucinate. It makes up functions or pieces of code, or it assumes things should work in a certain way and then they don't. In a few cases, it took me longer to debug the mistake that uh, ChatGPT did, then it would have taken me to write that code to begin with. In quite a few cases, it gave me a direction that it would take me a long, long time to figure out myself. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I will keep on exploring digital life hacks and sharing them with you. If you want to join me on this journey, be sure to subscribe to that video and uh, check out this video, which YouTube thinks you will enjoy as well. See you next time with a fresh new digital life hack.